welcome to Day to Day Knits, episode 10. My name is Sarah, as uh, most of you know. And, well, episode 10. Here we are. Two digits. Um, I am going to give you an outline of this episode, so... General information about the knit along, uh, and then FO slash what am I wearing, whips, and then talk about a giveaway and test knitting. I think it's really fun, maybe slightly shorter than last one, because I have a winless thing on my needles. So, knit along, knit along 2021. If you want to participate, uh, you might end up winning a little bundle of knitting related things from uh, notebooks to maybe a magazine or, you know, also yarn and accessories and such. And for that, you just have to get down, uh, click on the link that has the Ravelry group and you have to put post a picture on that group of an object that you started and finished this year that has also been talked about on this podcast this year. Next year, it will be next year. And um, <clears throat> so if you want to do that, you will have a chance of winning. It will be random generation, uh, not random generator. So if you post more than one project, you have more than one chance of winning in comparison to other people that might just enter once. Anyway, moving along. On to other things. I am wearing the Flutter But shirt by Jessie Maid. I just finished it this morning. Uh, I'm filming this on Sunday because I wanted to finish it and wear it for this episode. But yesterday I still had 12 rounds to go and then the bind off and I'm doing a sound bind off so that takes a little bit longer than the other binds off. Binds off? Yes. Bind offs? I think it's binds off. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know if you know. Uh, it has not been blocked and I still have, you know, many of those um, to take away properly, not literally hiding it just inside. Um, the yarn is Broken Modern Cotton DK, which is, uh, I think, 60% cotton, 40% rayon. So it has stretch. It's very drapey. And slightly shiny. Not shimmery, but it just has like a shine that really catches all the flutters, I think. It's nice. I think once I'm blocked, I have blocked this, it won't be rolling in uh, as it is. And um, so you can see a proper picture of it because this <laughs> might not be enough. Uh, I will post a picture right here of uh, what it looks like from the back about 12 rows away from finishing because that's it. I took a picture and I posted on Instagram yesterday morning. Uh, for this I used a US 3 and the US 1 needles. I do not know by heart what those numbers are in millimeters but that's something that you can easily google or if you have one of those little rulers um, or um, you know the things that you use to measure needles I think it usually says both American size and in millimeters at least the ones that they sell here do have both of them so if they are being made once and sold worldwide then I would think that you know they would have all that information there so you can easily compare um, <clears throat> and I think that's it about this. It was really easy, really fast. Uh, I have one mistake here, uh, but as you can see, it is fixed. Um, I cheated, but it worked. 
so who cares? And today I will be blocking as soon as I took all of these ends away. And I used two full skeins, two completely full skeins. So changes that I did to this pattern. This, this part here, before it separates for the sleeves, I did it about like three inches shorter. The flutters, they're supposed to be three inches long. That's less than 10 centimeters. I added two more inches. Now, now it's five inches, which is what? I don't know, 12 and a half, more or less, 12 and a half centimeters for the flutter part instead of like seven and a half centimeters. And then uh, for the bottom part, I just used up as much as I could of my second skein. I am wearing uh, high waist shorts. I wear, most of the things that I wear right now are high waist just because they're, for me, so much more comfortable. And that also tends to mean sometimes bigger pockets, which is fantastic. Speaking as a woman, because as a man, maybe you would not know what that's like. Anyway, moving on, onto it. This is the <clears throat> By Camper Ray Coziest Memory, The Coziest Memory. And since we last spoke, I think I had finished this one. And then this week, no, two weeks ago, I did this one on Sunday, because this is what I do on Scrappy Sundays. One little square uh, by the order that I'm using the yarn as I finish the project. So I finished this and all these three were used for the same hat earlier this year in like February. Then this one, well, actually it was probably January. This one I did in February. Uh, it's the, I wanna say something like shiny, happy. The color is, it's a really long name about death. Hideous screaming death, that's what that's called. And it's gray with a few speckles of green and a few speckles of uh, a purplish blue color. And the other one is just the ivory. And now I am doing, because today is Sunday, so I've already started my uh, square of the day. I'm using the thread that I used to make socks earlier this year. I would say Christmas socks, because that's what I had in mind when I made them. Christmas. Uh, and this is a local yarn to Tennessee, or, or well, I mean, it's from a local dyer. Um, I'm not sure if the sheep are actually from Tennessee. And I believe that it is a super wash, 100% merino, like 50% um, nylon sort of yarn. And this is it. And it is the happiest, jolliest red. I love it. I only have this much left. This is quite a pricey skein, but it is like 20, 100 grams, $25. Which maybe in euros is like 27. I don't know. For me, that is a lot for a skein. Um, but you know, it is an indie dyer, so that's what it is. And that's where I am with this. Uh, I think I am only a couple squares away from starting the second row because I'm doing it for a king size bed, so it's quite large. And that's where we are with this. Now, for Inga skis, skis, skies, I do not know, socks, they're called rustic cable socks. <clears throat> this is the finished one 
it has a super easy uh, to remember cable pattern. And I think that last time maybe I had not cast on yet. Anyway, I am at the heel. So that's the heel flap here. And that's the front of the leg. I'm using a long dog, long dog yarn or yarns. And the sock is a bounce sock, which is a super wash merino with um, nylon. I can't remember if it's 15 or 20%. The color is beautiful. Gingerbread, uh, I mean, really shows what it is. And I'm at the part where Inga, um, in her pattern, points to a YouTube video with this lady showing how to do the last bit of the heel, because this is a Norwegian heel. I don't know if there are other countries that make it, but that's what they apparently traditionally make over there. And um, the video, it doesn't have instructions. And it's literally just the lady showing you beginning to end of finishing this part of the heel. I th I'm, well, maybe it has other things in it, but it's just her knitting. And I only watched the part where she's knitting the heel. Um, <clears throat> because, well, those are the instructions. Uh, there's no step-by-step -step instructions, but you just have to watch the video. So I've been trying to find some time where I'm not out and about, which I was all the time yesterday. And then I had crazy sock camp. Uh, crazy sock camp, no, sorry. Summer sock camp for the crazy sock lady. And uh, so I, I just haven't had time yet. It's been extremely busy and I just haven't had time yet to finish this yarn. But we will get there and I want to do that today. Because I want to, in a week, have that sock done. So, it's an easy pattern. Uh, the only thing and I'm, I'm knitting the cables without the cable needle. It's very easy. Um, I want to say that someone out there has a video on how to do this, but I think you just have to Google or go onto YouTube and search for how to knit cables without the cable needle. It's very easy. And these are not like huge cables. So unless you have a super slippery yarn, you can do that. And then you just have to watch the tutorial for the bottom of the heel and then it's like smooth sailing. And then I just have to look for the instructions for to make the toes because I don't know that by heart. But it's super easy. I love the yarn. Uh, I love the pattern. I think it's super cute. Uh, I definitely plan on doing it again. Um, so you, you know, well, some of you know that I bought lots of sock yarn from um, a discontinued um, type that was on sale a few months ago. And lots of those are in brown colors or beige. So, you know, I think that would go well with cables. I think it will say um, winter, fall, and you know, all those colors that go with it. I'm trying to check my notes here. Ah, yes, and then we have the Sorel, which I will not really say much. It's the Sorel by Woolen Pine. I'm using uh, mostly Mondine yarn and uh, Rosarius for the first mohair for the top and Kathy Concept 50 mohair shades. Somewhere out here, I will be posting a picture of it because there's literally been zero progress. I started using a US 7 needle but then after I had a little issue with it, uh, I changed to a number five. And for the ribbing, I'm using a number three, except for the ribbing at the end of the body, because I completely forgot about that. And you might not be listening to 
my washing machine telling me that uh, it's time to change things so i'm gonna do that later but basically this is what it looks like it has literally not changed places in the whole bedroom so i had said that i wanted to have them a sleeve and then in two weeks another sleeve but i did not because i was busy finishing this one and uh, but you know what i'm gonna try and do that i'm gonna try in two weeks have one sleeve done and in four weeks have the other sleeve done the thing is i knit at um, lunchtime at work for what an hour uh, and then usually I come home and it's some more, but work has been so busy that I am not taking a lunch hour. I'm working through lunch and, um, and then I come home and I'm just tired and I still have to do chores and cook and all that. Or I'm going to go and hang out with my in-laws or something. Or if he's having trouble and I have to take her to the vet. Or, you know, this and that and those. And so that's why lately I've had a whole lot less time for knitting. Luckily, this is super easy. Yesterday I was literally shopping for like clothes with Joseph and knitting. I had my, my yarn bag on my shoulder and I was just knitting as he were was like trying on shorts and such easy and wow it is not even yet 20 minutes of this and I am done with the whips isn't that crazy that's a big change but we have other things to talk about so as you know I have designed a pair of socks and oh it's on my lap uh, I only brought one out here because I only need one to show you what the sock looks like. But it's a shorty. It has a lacy pattern out front and on the side as well. And that is in the pattern divided with in three charts. I think I told you the name, but it's called Era Socks. Era is the Portuguese name for an ivy plant. And you know what? I think I'm going to try to spell out, like not spell out, but if I were an English speaking person as a first language, how would, like what word, what string of letters would make it sound like what it is in Portuguese? So then you can compare because I can totally see people calling it Hira or hire or something but the h is silent and then it's an e which is called well read as a and then you have an r and an a the r is just like a little flick of the tongue re, re. and a at the end which really I, in english i put a yields with an h a. Uh, and anyway, so the pattern is out for sale. Isn't that cool? It's my first one. Um, it's uh, really exciting. And oh, the yarn is Mondine. And you can see the bottom of my foot is starting to felt. Like you can see here where I don't put my weight. And then here where it's felting. Which is, I think, good news for a 100% wool sock. I think that this is good yarn for socks. It doesn't have nylon, which is something that I really like. Honestly, I like like 20% nylon in my socks. But this is like a full on natural other than the dyeing process, because you know, obviously sheep are not this color. It's just, you know, literally 100% wool of Portuguese sheep. Meaning not super wash. But I also, I don't put my socks with my other clothes 
I just don't do that. I wash everything with soak, where you literally just soak it for 15 minutes with a product soak, which I had a little bottle around here, but now I don't. Um, and you know, it could be easier and you don't have to worry about what your machine or the temperature of the water is going to do to it. Oh gosh, I, I, I love touching this part that this tweeted. Uh, not tweeted, um, felt it. It feels so smooth. I like it. All right, I'm gonna give you another close-up. Maybe you can see different, the different shades of green that this color has. Hmm. I don't think this, this picture, the camera is showing it very well. It's a brighter green than what it is showing. But anyway, I'll put a picture here or maybe another one there. I don't know. To show you what the pattern looks like knitted. And yeah, so if give it a try. It takes like maybe a week and a half to knit. It's shorties, you don't have to do the leg. It's easy. Um, <clears throat> you only have to pay attention to the lace pattern. But, I mean, it's not like a very hard thing to do. Anyway, so I would like for you to comment, where are you watching from to get a free copy of the pattern? And why I'm asking you this is, um, after having a certain amount of subscribers onto my page, I can see general information about the people that are watching. Like for example, it says that 100% of people that watch these videos are women, 100%. So if you are a man watching this knitting video, I am curious, and uh, please let us know below if YouTube is not counting you because you are one in hundreds. But really, so back to where I was. I noticed that 37% uh, of viewers are from the US, 11% are from the UK. I have it written down there. 3% are from Canada, 1% are from De uh, Germany, I was going to say Deutschland, Germany or Deutschland, if you are in Germany speaking German or, you know, somewhere else speaking German, 1% are from Australia and then two other countries that uh, still have a somewhat significant amount of viewers are the Netherlands or Netherlands and Hungary with in Hungarian, <clears throat> it appears that it is called, gosh, I forget how to say this, but Magyarorzak, 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 I might be butchering it, I'm trying though, um, anyway, just if you want to get a free pattern, well, you know, not everyone. I will select randomly one person out of everyone that enters. And, and then that person will get a free pattern for the Era socks. Recommended yarn is 100% wool. Uh, probably not merino. I think something more rustic would be better. But you know what? Whatever gives you a gauge that works for a sock that you wear, then just do it. I don't think it matters much. I mean, as long as you get gauge, right? I mean, that's what I did with this. 
the pattern calls for something that is part wool and I wanted to have something that I could wear outside in the middle of summer right here in Tennessee and that was cotton and it's a super light cotton too by the way anyway <clears throat> so that's that for the giveaway and now just a little bit of acquisitions and test netting talk acquisitions are Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks and this white and this beautiful blue, which is called, oh, 100% Peruvian high wool. That's what this is, content, made in Peru. Sapphire Heather, so heathered yarn, which is something that I love because it just brings such richness out of the color. It's not just the solid, it's a solid that, I mean, look at it. It just, it looks like it has all sorts of different blues. Hope you were able to see that. Anyway, it is beautiful. And for this, I'm planning on designing a cardigan. I've never done a project that big in color work, but I don't think it should be very hard for the sort of thing that I am imagining. And I want to, you know, start working on it because it will take a long time and then test knitting will also take a long time. So that's something to look forward to. And then <clears throat> in a week, I will need test knitters for a sock that has the tiniest amount of color work and it is going to be a shorty very vanilla you like so very easy other you know than that tiny color work part which you will memorize in seconds it is that easy and for that i am going to be using i don't have it here right now but my plan is to use the, I have to pull it up here, Hawthorne, speckled hand painted. That's what I'm going to use as a main body yarn. And it's a hand painted yarn, as the name says. And it is, I believe, it is 80% fine superwash Highland wool and 20% nylon. Now this is a superwash that does not feel like superwash because it is Highland wool. It feels slightly more rustic. Now, I don't love superwash just because it is superwash because of the environment. Um, but right now, uh, I do not have access to 100% wool yarns, or not 100%, I mean, I don't have access to sock yarn with or without nylon that is fingering and that is not superwash. So that's the one that I'm going to use. Not that I have to explain myself, but I will because you know, you know how I stand on this and I think it makes more sense if I explain. And so, Main body is going to be that, the Highland hand painted yarn, which is fingering. And then I'm going to be using one of these for the color <clears throat> part. I'm, while I love this one, I really am into pink right now because it's the peak of summer. And really, that's mostly the only time that I wear pink. And so this yarn is... A leftover yarn that my friend Jane gifted to me along with like 20 other mini skeins. And so what I recommend, if you want to test knit, 
is like 20 grams of a fan yarn that maybe if you don't wear neon but you've always wanted to like you've always liked neon i would get something like that or if you just want a little color you know just something that is fun and enjoyable and just pleasant surprise a nice detail and then just a main body that will coordinate well with it it could be high contrasting um like say brown and then bright pink or let me think a navy blue and then a super bright greenish turquoise color you know just something that you would consider a basic that you'd wear all the time and then something fun that you don't get to wear all the time but it's not like you don't like it you just don't want it all over your body uh, and let me know if you want to test it i will be posting soon about that particular test net and my instagram page so you can uh, go on down and you know i'll just maybe ask you a couple questions about uh, your experience test knitting but this is a very easy pattern um you don't have to read charts or anything so i feel like anyone can enter which also means that you know there will be a limit to the amount of people test netting but i've come up with a name for it and it's going to be the vanilla summer smash socks lots of s's there but vanilla because it's going to be really simple you can easily turn it into a vanilla sock and then summer because you know fun colors and splash because it's just a little splash you know it's just a little something to uh make the whole thing you know fun and yeah so that's that one and i have two other ones um one of them is going to be called working socks and that is without the G, with an apostrophe. Um, because apparently there's lots of working socks, work socks, workman socks. So mine are going to be working socks. And that one will be super wash on purpose. And I think that I might use this one. But maybe not. I am not sure yet. I will have to think about it. And then I have another one that will call for Monteen. And I'm using a bright yellow because it's fun and it also goes with the theme. And that one will have a little bit of everything. A little bit of knits, a little bit of pearls, a little bit of cables, a little bit of eyelets. And it's one that will require a little bit more paying attention to what you're doing. But do let me know if you are interested. Uh, the yellow one, well for me yellow, you can pick whatever color you want. Um, will be um, mid-calf. So like uh, this size more or less. This Vanilla Summer Splash Socks will be shorties. And the Working Socks will be in between. The Working Socks are also really simple. They're not vanilla though. Um, but they are simple. They have a, a really nice sturdy cuff. And yes, so I will be playing on that. And do let me know if you want to enter any of those or if you are curious about it let me know if you have any questions do message me on instagram or just if you don't have instagram message me on ravelry or if you don't want to do that you can also comment on youtube 
and the socks will all all three socks will come in a small medium and large and whatever length you want to make them small is for eight to nine inches medium is from nine to ten inches and large is from 10 to 11 inches i do not remember what that is in centimeters right now though anyway so that is all i am now gonna go and keep on um knitting my blanket as i edit this video it ended up being a little bit on the longer side again you know i have i talked less about the knitting that i'm actually doing and you know do let me know if you want to try and be a test knitter let me know where you live if you want to enter uh the giveaway for a chance to win the Era socks pattern and do participate in the yearly knit along oh and apparently three quarters of you watching this video are not subscribers what are you doing subscribe to make sure that you get to see all other videos that come out usually every two weeks although the first ones were once a month but those videos ended up being over an hour long so that was crazy i mean nice but you know not everyone enjoys that. <clears throat> so, this is it. I hope you liked it. I hope you're curious about, you know, what's coming next. And, yeah. Anyway, leave a comment below. Don't forget, where are you from? Bye!